Jesus is Lord. And he was such a nice Jewish boy. Jesus changed my life, and he's still in the life-changing business. As Paul said, the love of Christ compels me. You know, Randy, I think most people don't realize how much darkness there is in it, the world. It can't be just coming to church and getting pumped up with the You faith. and I are all going to have to have something of faith in us by Jesus which we died stand. died to save sinners, and you are a sinner. Shalom and welcome to Crosstalk. My name is Randy Weiss. I'm a Jewish believer in a Jewish Messiah. His name is Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. I love Israel and I love the Jewish people. And some of you may have the mistaken notion that Israel is less than wonderful. Uh, you're mistaken. It's very wonderful. Israel is uh, a glorious place and God has revealed his love and really his magnificence in the land of Israel. You probably don't realize that uh, it's not an apartheid state. Uh, it's not a cancer in the region. Uh, if you listen to the news and hear the rhetoric from some of the uh, Arab detractors, you'd think that uh, uh, Arabs in Israel are mistreated and uh, Muslims don't have a voice or a life in Israel. And uh, that's just, it's really a, a ridiculous kind of position to, to, uh, to believe. It's just simply not true. What you may not be aware of is that a Gallup poll recently uh, showed that in the happiness index of all the nations in the world, 143 nations, uh, the survey was done, Israel is number 11 as the, uh, we're the happiest people, uh, the 11th happiest group of people on earth live in Israel. And those who would suggest that, oh, there's so much suffering in Israel and uh, what you need to understand, according to a, 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 a scientific type s survey done by Gallup, I mean, a respected uh, polling organization, Israel, uh, the people of Israel, 4% of the people in Israel say they suffer. And coincidentally, that is identical to the percentage in the United States. 4% of the people of the United States say they suffer. And uh, I, I, I'm pointing these things out because uh, we're talking about secrets that are hidden in plain sight about Israel. And we want to expose some of these little secrets so that you, you will also, like, like I love Israel, you will like Israel, you will love Israel. So that I enjoy going to Israel. I want you to consider going to Israel. And I want you to be a part of blessing Israel, because there's a blessing for those who bless Israel. And I'm blessed today to have a dear friend, Pastor Wayne Hilsden from King of Kings Community in Jerusalem with us. And we've got some things to talk about Israel. You've been there over 30 years and you've been in faithful ministry the entire time. It's remarkable. It's fantastic. I love Israel. I love the people. I love the land. I'm a privileged person. I really am. One of the important realities, one of the secrets that I think needs to be exposed is that uh, there's a challenge that exists to the church in Israel, to the church abroad. And you're kind of, in a way, in the middle of this because you're a credible guy, you're a rational guy, you're well respected in pretty much all circles among believers in the land. Uh, a lot of people aren't aware of the Christ at the Checkpoint uh, Forum. You've had the privilege of being directly involved, and I'd like you to explain where it came from, what it has done, and perhaps how it might change in the future. So Christ at the Checkpoint was an initiative taken by Bethlehem Bible College. It's a Palestinian Arab school in Bethlehem in the West Bank, what I prefer to call Judea, the biblical name. And it was a conference that was called to address issues related to Christian Zionism, related to the nation of Israel and injustice, and Palestinians saying, 
we're being mistreated, here's the real truth, the world is not hearing the message. The impression given that most of the world is pro-Israel, or maybe more true to say evangelical Christians are generally pro-Israel, and in some cases anti-Palestinian. And so it was an effort to get their narrative and their perspective to the media and to the Christian world in particular. I was asked to speak over two years ago. They gave me a, a subject that I am passionate about, and the message was on the ongoing role of the Jewish people in God's purposes. There is a teaching in parts of the church, even in some evangelical churches, that when Israel, for the most part, rejected Jesus as Messiah, then God rejected them. God replaced the Jewish people, the chosen people, with a new people, a new race, as it were, a church primarily made up of Gentiles. They are the new chosen people over against the ancient chosen people who have, by default, by unbelief, become no longer his people. I believe that that's a lie of the devil. I believe that the Bible teaches clearly that God has an ongoing purpose for Israel. Romans chapter 9, 10, and 11 clearly spells that out. Paul asked the rhetorical question, verse 1 of chapter 11, has God cast away his people Israel? He says, certainly not. His first proof is, I'm a Jew. I'm, I'm really a Jew, and I believe in Jesus. I've given my life to him. If God's rejected his people, what's a good Jew like me doing following Jesus? So that's post-crucifixion. This is post-so-called rejection of Jesus as Messiah. And he's saying, it's obvious that God still has a plan for me and the other Jews. Later in the text, it says in uh, verse 29 that the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable, without repentance. The call of the Jewish people has not ended. They still have a role to play. And in these last days, that they will resume that divine calling to be a light to all the nations of the earth. Now, back to Christ at the checkpoint. I declare that message as clearly and as faithfully to the word as I could. Frankly, I didn't get any um, antagonism toward me from even the Palestinians that were present in the room. And I think increasingly there's an openness to my particular view, even on the Palestinian side. In fact, many, who, many Palestinians who didn't attend that event understand that God has an ongoing role for the Jewish people. And in fact, did not want to go to the conference because that's what they believe and they felt that they would be intimidated by the other side if they attended. But I felt that the Lord led me to go to present that message. I didn't compromise. And uh, in fact, I've been invited now to other conferences of a similar kind. I spoke in Philadelphia back in December, and it was called Impact Holy Land. Some of the same speakers that speak at Christ at the Checkpoint were there. And so even after I presented my very strong case for the ongoing role of the Jewish people in God's purposes, I was asked to say that again and be who I am and give my perspective. So that's uh, my understanding of Christ at the Checkpoint. They will continue, it, it appears, to organize such conferences in the future. I think it's fair to let them speak their mind as long as they continue to invite people that have a different perspective. Do you feel that they are being used, in a sense, by those who would uh, want to mislead people around the world, and particularly among the evangelicals here in America? It's propaganda. The reality is the ones who are most vehemently opposed to Christian Zionism and, and Israel as a nation are outsiders. They're not actually the Palestinians within, the, within Judea and Samaria. These are people that come in, they help organize the conference, they get a platform, they say, they do their spiel, but are not actually living in the land and actually knowing the reality on the ground. There's a movement within America to influence college students, and university campuses are becoming hotbeds of, uh, I would have to call it nothing less than propaganda, uh, anti-Israel, anti 
um, anti-Christian uh, viewpoints fueled by pro-Palestinian groups. Right. I'm part of a ministry in Israel called the Jerusalem Institute of Justice. It's led by Caleb Myers, who is a Messianic Jew and a lawyer. And he is actively going to campuses around the world now and giving the other side of the story. He's a bold uh, voice, and I support him wholeheartedly. And I've had opportunities from time to time also to speak in a university context and present what I believe is the biblical view concerning Israel. Have you been received well? And has, uh, conversely, have there been uh, efforts to oppose your viewpoint while you're there? Certainly. But I think that I do my best to present my views not in a way that uh, is overly offensive. I think I, I try to be kind in my remarks. I, I think that that makes a huge difference, the tone in which we present the truth. We'd like to present some of the materials, some of the video that you have. And, and when we return in just a moment, I want to show you some things that I think will also help let the secret be exposed, those secrets hidden in plain sight. Please stay tuned. What if I told you that for the cost of a couple of cups of coffee, you can present the gospel message to hundreds of people across the island of Cuba? That type of impact is hard to find anywhere in the world. But that's exactly what's possible with the Today With God project. You see, every flash drive that we bring down gets given to a pastor who will then use it across the island in door-to-door -door evangelism, in roadside evangelism, in church ministry, in Sunday school, in seminary. One flash drive. It's incredible what God can do. By skipping a cup of coffee just a couple of times a month, you can provide one flash drive that will get used across the island with hundreds of Cubans where the gospel message is presented. All it takes is $10. Give us a call at 1-800-688-3422 or visit us online at crosstalk.org. So more and more people today as they read their scriptures, especially new believers, have come to see some kind of literal fulfillment of ancient prophecies. They see how it was predicted by Micah that Jesus would be born in a town called Bethlehem, and he really was. And uh, he was literally exiled into Egypt and returned to Judea as a fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. There are details concerning his death and his resurrection that we read in Isaiah 53 and other texts. And even the minutest details, even how his garments were to be divided and the exact price of his betrayal. And likewise, the common reader can see prophecies that are not yet fulfilled from the Old Testament as likely will be fulfilled in some kind of literal fashion. And the psalmist writes in Psalm 19 regarding the scriptures that God's word makes wise the simple. That somehow even children, teenagers, can read the text and somehow understand what's written without great sophistication and without the aid of big libraries and Google. Time to time I'll make little comments, but I don't think um, I'll sway your views in any way, but mostly just a reading of the text. 
Uh, Gary Burge, thought I, you did a wonderful job and your, your view of, um, you called it messianic fulfillment. I, I think I'm with you there. I wanna to talk to you more about that later, but I think I'm with you on that. Uh, and you already mentioned the scripture, uh, the calling of Abram, uh, Avram, Abram in, uh, in Genesis chapter 12. I'll just read the, the third verse where it says, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So what's the place or purpose of the Jewish people in God's purposes? One is to bring blessing, not just to the Jewish people, but to be a blessing to all the families of the earth. While Abraham is the father of both Isaac and Ishmael, the promise of his seed being a blessing to the entire world was not given to Ishmael, but to Isaac and his offspring. We read in Genesis 26, verse 1 and following, And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines and Gerar. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land which I shall tell you. Dwell in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I will give all these lands, and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham your father, and I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to you your descendants all these lands, lands, and in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Genesis 28, we read, concerning Jacob, the son of Isaac, G Genesis 28, verse 3 and following, may God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you, that you may be an assembly of, of peoples and give you the blessing of Abraham to you and your descendants with you, that you may inherit the land in which you are a stranger, which God gave you. To Abraham. And then we read in Genesis 28, again, concerning Jacob, verse 13 and following, and behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and the east, to the north and the south, and in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And we know that the, uh, the ultimate blessing for all the nations, all the families of the earth, will be in that single seed, which is Jesus, which is Yeshua. And we read in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 14, where it says, For it is evident that our Lord arose from Judah. And so from Jacob, his son Judah, a new line begins, and ultimately the Messiah will come from that line, and he will be the king over the nation. So we see how the Jewish people who are the direct descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Judah have a unique special place in the eternal purposes of God. Indeed, through them and their seed, and ultimately through Jesus, son of David, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Number two, the Jewish people bless us by being agents or ambassadors of the gospel or the good news of salvation. And so we read this in John chapter four, verse 22, Jesus saying to the Samaritan woman, you worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of, depending on your text, your uh, translation, salvation is from the Jews or of the Jews. It means the same thing. And Paul writes in Romans chapter three, verses one to three, what advantage then has the Jew or what is the profit of circumcision? Much in every way, chiefly because to them, that is to the Jews, were committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? Will their unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? And so the Jewish people have a special role in God's purposes because the oracles of God, the very revelation of salvation was given to them and they were to be the ones who were to send that message to all the families of the earth. The Jewish people have been given great privilege and Paul says this in Romans chapter nine, verses two and following. I have great sorrow and continual grief in my heart for I could wish that I myself were cursed from the Messiah, from Christ, for my brethren, my countrymen, according to the flesh, 
who are, not were, but who are Israelites, to whom pertain the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the service of God, and the promises, of whom are the fathers and from whom, according to the flesh, Christ came, who is over all the eternally blessed God. Amen. So far we see in the scriptures that I've read that we see that the Jewish people have a special place in God's purposes as a means of bringing blessing to all the families of the earth and that they are given the oracles of God to reveal God's salvation plan, not just to them, but to all the families of the earth. Welcome back once again. We've been talking about secrets that are hidden in plain sight. And we're trying to expose certain things about Israel for all of our benefit. I say that in a selfish way. I believe that my future and the future of my family is based on what occurs here in the land where I live. But I believe that the future of the land where I live will be impacted by how America interacts with Israel. America has been a great friend to Israel. Americans recognize that the uh, thinking Americans at least recognize that the most democratic nation in the Middle East is Israel. And our greatest ally in the Middle East is Israel. So America has been a wonderful friend uh, to Israel in the past, but a lot of us are concerned of what will the future be for relations between America and Israel. It's my opinion that the secret that needs to be well understood, it shouldn't be a secret, it should be obvious to everyone that if you bless Israel, you're blessed. If you bless the children of Israel, you're blessed. God loves the children of Israel. God loves Israel. And to mistreat those whom God loves is a bad thing. I have a deep concern that America could drift from its important position as the, the best friend nationally that Israel has. I have a concern that the only way that that would ever happen is if the church in America dissipates if the church either loses its influence in America or the church loses its way in America and would choose to turn away from Israel and in fact turn against Israel. The evangelical church in America has been a great supporter of Israel. I have deep concerns that that might change and that's the reason I wanted to ask this last question that I'll ask, Wayne. Uh, what can be done so that the church is protected in its understanding of Israel and what risks do we face in that regard? I believe it's time for evangelicals to get together, to create a forum in which we fellowship together but also look at the word together and look at the implications of what, Bi what the Bible says, what God says about Israel, and send that message to the world. The reality is, in evangelical circles, there's slippage, first and foremost, concerning literacy. 
how many people are reading the Bible. Mm. A lot of the reason why there's a drift away from support for Israel is that people don't know what the Bible says about that. Or if they know something about what the Bible teaches, they're not looking at it in a very literal way. They're spiritualizing the text and are coming to very odd conclusions. So I believe that very soon we're going to see that kind of rallying together back to the Bible, uh, back to what does the Bible say about Israel and the Jewish people, and that we need to send that message to the whole world using every form of media, social media, television, radio, whatever. And uh, I hope we can link arms together in that together. Well, I look forward to that, Wayne. You have, you have been a blessing in my life and in, in the life of our family, and, and uh, we, we appreciate you so much. In closing, do you have any thoughts, anything you want to tell our audience? What, what do they need to know from your heart? Well, I'm grateful to Christians around the world who look at our situation in the Middle East, a powder keg, ready to explode, and that you're praying, that you care, that you see that what happens in Israel, in our Middle East context, in this very dangerous neighborhood, has implications for Christians around the world. There are forces today, satanic forces, that would like to annihilate Bible-believing, evangelical believers, that would like to see our message stifled and shut down. There are forces that want to create a world caliphate, a, an Islamic empire that suppresses all that we stand for and believe in based upon the Word of God. We need your prayers. We need your support. And thank you for supporting this work and for Randy Weiss and Crosstalk continue to support this work because this is the message that needs to go forth and you're listening you're watching be faithful to that well thank you so much brother i again i i just i appreciate you i respect you and i thank god for you you are a blessing and i hope you've enjoyed this program i hope that uh, you'll come back uh, and see future programs and let us know what you think uh, connect with us uh, Let's be friends. Why don't you get a hold of me on Facebook? It's Randy Weiss, the number one. And you can visit us on our website, www.crosstalk.org. Uh, let's connect. Until next time, shalom and God bless.